We'll break for lunch uh, at noon. Uh, we have a 45-minute lunch planned. Uh, we do have a coffee break a little later in the day at about uh, just close to 3 p.m. And then we do invite all of you all to stay with us for cocktails from 5 to 6. Um, on either side of the, of the bar uh, back there are uh, not just the exercise but the restrooms as well in case anyone does want to sneak there during the sessions or anything. Um, uh, the Dasra team and Dasra volunteers here, many of whom have traveled from India for the event, are wearing these orange badges. If any of you all have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We have launched four knowledge products today along the themes of gender equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, please see our website for more details about these. We've tried something new this time, QR codes, which are ubiquitous in India, but sometimes I feel um, people aren't as up with some of the tech in the U.S. actually, which is a bit of a reverse culture shock for me. And so we can help you um, in, in figuring out how to, you know, uh, scan the QR codes on your phones. I think most cameras come with inbuilt scanners these days. But that will allow you to uh, check out these knowledge products, uh, dive deeper into them. We've got a few of them placed at different portions of the room as well. Uh, but to actually go through them and understand them a little better, and what I mean by this Jedi lens that I'm talking about, uh, please do check out, um, you know, scan the, the QR codes to learn more. One request for all of you, if something strikes you about what you're hearing today or someone saying something that resonates, uh, please amplify the thought uh, by tweeting about it. We have two hashtags, uh, DPF2022 and hashtag build better for today's session. Uh, we do have um, Andrew, our lovely photographer here today, uh, who will be taking some photos of the forum live in action and maybe sharing a few on our platform. Uh, please feel free uh, to let our team know if you'd like to opt out of any of this. Uh, we will make sure that we do respect that. And with that, let's begin um, to set the tone for the day. We will begin with a discussion covering a discussion covering our theme Build India Better. I welcome Tarun Jotwani and Anne Lindsay Makepeace to talk about powering up with a Jedi lens. Allow me to introduce them briefly uh, as we welcome them onto the stage. Tarun Jotwani is co-founder and managing partner of TKG Investments based in London. He has built successful businesses in different roles and worked in the banking sector for over 25 years across New York, Tokyo, London, and Mumbai. Tarun is a Stanford um, Distinguished Careers Institute Fellow and has also been a Dasra board member for over 10 years. And um, Tarun's better half is an advocate for transforming girls' lives in South Asia. She has been involved in a variety of philanthropic efforts throughout her time living internationally. She has been involved in Tokyo with women's shelters, with Dasra, and as a UK ambassador for the Mumbai-based Magic Bus, which many of you in the room here know today, uh, which through sport development focuses on improving outcomes for youth. Thank you, Tarun and Anne, and we would love to have you on stage. Thank you, Vishal, uh, and I must say it's nice to be here in person and not Zooming, uh, finally. Um, I, um, I don't think uh, the time alloc allocated to me is going to shorten the time to get to 5 o'clock, but uh, we'll try. Um, I, as Vishal said, uh, you know, I, I do look forward, Anna and I both look forward to uh, your discussions today from the experts and learning a lot more uh, in this in this space, uh, but hopefully Anne and I can set the stage for those discussions. So in 2015, almost 200 countries signed on to the UN Sustainable Development Goals for addressing challenges from hunger to climate change. And in their annual progress report uh, early this month, Gates Foundation wrote, seven years in, the world is on track to achieve almost none of the goals. Global gender equality is now not expected until 2108. That's 2108, 108. Furthermore, as they go on to say, 
The EU contributes almost half of all official development assistance, but the war in Ukraine is straining Europe's commitment to international aid. The COVID epidemic has triggered a pullback as well. The latest UNDPI report published earlier this month shows that while most of the high human development index countries did not suffer declines in HDI in 2021, the majority of countries in low and medium, medium HDI did. India, shockingly, fell in the rankings to 132nd out of 191 countries. Millions in India fell, fell back into poverty, negating more than a decade of work and negating the demographic advantage that is so often mentioned as the driver of India's economic growth in the future. And finally, climate change. Climate change is an existentialist crisis and it's a threat to India over the next two de decades. And the latest IPCC report plains, paints a very bleak picture. With a combination of floods and droughts and lack of usable water, the, the picture indeed is very bleak in India. And as ever, the most marginalized communities will be the least equipped to shoulder the weight of these disasters. We need a pathway to development that is sustainable and resilient to climate change. And yeah, gosh, it all sounds very gloomy, but there are obviously there have been a lot of green shoots. 20 years of work by organizations like DASRA, working in conjunction with grassroots organizations and responsive local governments, has made the more vulnerable in India clearly more resilient. Over this larger arc of time, there has been a massive reduction in poverty. 70% in infant mortality, 50% in the HDI index, and financial inclusion as measured by bank account penetration is at 80%, which is kind of remarkable. Undoubtedly, there has been tremendous growth from a low base, but this has not reached everyone. The walls of our social connections are perhaps more insidiously damaging and polarizing than the walls between nations. DASRA has for 20 years invested and in innovated to break down these barriers to catalytic social change. And I witnessed a remarkable journey. DASRA's journey has been a remarkable one from 20 years ago where DASRA first established it's DASRA giving circles, which are groups of philanthropists pooling funds for directed giving. They catalyzed and helped scale some of the well-known NGOs like Magic Bus, as which I'll mention, and Educate Girls. We know now that both large-scale NGOs and small micro-NGOs both have a big role to play in India. We also know that collaborative giving and collective action on the ground are crucial to move the needle. But gender, equity, diversity, and inclusion at both the societal level and in organizations in India is in dire straits. DASRA has spent years designing and implementing programs with these values, but it's pretty clear now we need to re-engage with a renewed focus and perhaps a new approach. The targets of these programs, the underrepresented, must feel they have a voice and a sense of urgency and how these programs are constructed and indeed the outcomes they'd like to achieve. And I can personally vouch for the fact that making deep cultural changes and changing norms in organizations is a long and a hard road. Everybody from top to bottom needs to be brought in, needs to be bought in and walk the talk. For example, People tend to like and hire people of similar backgrounds whom they identify with. And at least for me, it required, in my organizations, it, it's required systematic changes to move the needle. It's exponentially tougher, as you can imagine, to change societal norms. And unfortunately, the consensus now emerging amongst academics is that years of anti-discrimination policies in Western companies have had much less effect than hoped. And this is despite the fact that there are loads of studies that have reaffirmed the link between diversity and inclusiveness and company productivity. 
And if it's so difficult in the West, it's so much harder in India with its history of very fixed social structures. And it requires tremendous courage from the vulnerable and underrepresented to break through these traditional norms and empower themselves. Dasra embraces this challenge, and we need your help more than ever. I have been amazed at how a little bit of agency and confidence and consistent mentor mentorship can transform the youth and can tr transform the girls. My family have, and I have been truly inspired by young women who have literally broken through from villages and the slums of India. Making their own decisions, building independent, successful, and highly productive lives. As my wife Anne says, they are, they are our stars. But they need our help. They need pathways to help them break through. They don't know how. And time and time again, I have seen how Dasra has been so essential and catalytic to their lives for the ones who've broken through. And so I persuaded my wife, or I persuaded Anne, to come and talk a little bit about her stars. We arrive at the girls' club in a small town in Jharkhand, a safe space, taking place in a bare concrete room decorated with motivational phrases and motifs. Twenty young girls, barefoot and dressed in vibrantly colored cotton kurtas, most with their heads covered, sat together on mats looking to a, a fellow peer leader called a girl champion. Their eyes sparkled, their smiles radiated, and their eagerness to welcome new faces into the safe haven was palpable. It is a place where girls are encouraged to reconsider returning to school, to fend off offers for early marriage, to live safely at home, and to become girl stars, empowered by the friendship and support of others. The young leader led the girls through songs, stories, and discussions about home life, relationships, goals, and concerns. They sang a song that their world is full of stars, small stars, Bollywood stars, girl stars, and most importantly, their own star. Savitri might well have been there, sitting on a colorful, crowded plastic mat, her inquisitive eyes looking at me, conveying her dream for a safe passage through life's treacherous corridors. Savitri's breakthrough from the young girl on the mat to attending a U.S. liberal arts-styled university in Bangladesh, to the halls of Oxford for a master's in climate change, IIT Bombay, and now to ranking number one in Jharkhand's civil service exam, where she placed at the top of her state. As she appears on TV, radio, and in print, she is using this newfound platform to show the way for other youths so that they may follow their dreams and serve their country. There is Sharon, who escaped early marriage to work her way to Canada from Kerala, winning the Alberta Council for Global Cooperation Top 30 Under 30, her award for engaging in educating women in underserved communities on the importance of eye care. Young women have to often escape the conversations of early marriage to gain permission to go on to further studies, to excel, and to make a difference. Through years of engaging with my mentees, our conversations have led the young women to work towards taking risks, fulfilling their aspirations, and finding the courage to stand up in their communities. They are all change makers, leading the way for others in their communities and in their country. India holds many shining stars. These are my stars. Out of sight, perhaps, but never out of mind. I know they will continue to illuminate a path through Indians, India's inspiring communities. Dasra has in the past, and I know will in the future, lead more of India's young stars. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne and Tarun, for sharing these 
uh, beautiful insights and personal stories with us as well and perspectives. Um, 